the LVMH Prize finalists have been announced and a lot of people are not happy. The LVMH Prize 2024 finalists have been announced and a lot of people are not happy. I wonder if you can guess why. Yes, you guessed it because everybody's white. Everybody in the finalists of the LVMH Prize has been, you know, is basically somebody descending from Caucasian ancestry. And unfortunately for a lot of these people, they're also not that good. Um, one of the people that I know, um, some of them I don't actually know, but one of the people that I'm kind of familiar with is this brand here called um, Hodakova, because I remember seeing it online and thinking, oh, this looks like something lots of Volkova would wear. And then going on her profile and seeing that they follow each other and they've got some posts with each other. So I'm not too sure if these girls are friends with lots of Volkova, who used to be the former um, stylist at Vetemar and Balenciaga, and now is doing stuff with Miu Miu and I think Mark Jacobs. She's um, also did stuff with Yeezy back in the day. Um, I think a lot of her style is also stuff that Bianca Sanzori is doing now in terms of Ye's um, wife. She's kind of taken whatever she does, you know, with the little kitten heels and the tights and shit and kind of elevated it in her own kind of way. But the only brand I'm familiar with that I think with any kind of notoriety is, Hod is Hodokova. And the other brand I thought that was pretty cool from this list only was this brand here called Marie Adam Leonard. It kind of reminds me of like, you know, um, Phoebe Philo like flipping, um, what's the thing called that? Celine. It's kind of got that kind of vibe about it. So again, maybe not the most interesting original thing in the world but still it's hilarious what is hilarious about this is that i'm not usually somebody to rag on about representation and diversity i really don't give a fuck for the most part but i find it hilarious how performative this whole lvmh prize was when when the whole diversity drive thing happened with the black squares and unfortunately in the wake of the unfortunate passing and death and murder actually of george floyd um there was a lot of people basically you know ringing the bell and the alarm of diversity and the lack of flipping inclusivity the lack of just range and just interesting people working at these magazines and these brands and people just not you know some of the smaller people especially coming up not being highlighted and a lot of brands a lot of magazines a lot of publications a lot of prizes were basically going out of their way to say hey we're going to change things now we're going to be more diverse we're going to have different faces we're going to make this thing be reflective of the fashion industry because you know one of the things that's annoying about fashion the diversity thing is annoying because for the most part fashion is worn by everybody right it's not something that's only um specific to a certain race or a certain creed or a certain segment of the population everybody wears fashion to some certain extent but in general nowadays especially fashion has become ubiquitous it's become a worldwide thing a lot of people are into it a lot of people study it and to get uh, to have like to have fashion be predominantly presented in a very Caucasian, white-facing way is almost insulting when you think of the global fashion world and the amount of people that buy it, especially high-end fashion. A lot of the buyers who are buying it aren't necessarily people that are making the stuff, aren't the people they're putting in the lookbooks and shit. So it kind of is a bit insulting to your intelligence and doesn't and dismisses the work of people that have come before, the people who are sustaining the scene, the people that are talking about it. It's pretty nuts. Especially, I remember, one of the things that kind of clocked my or keyed my attention to it a lot that kind of really brought it to home because i really wasn't thinking about it too much was um early vetema when vetema first launched demna's um first brand that's still legendary to this day i was a bit annoyed because i used to thinking hold on when i was buying vetema early on first season stuff i was fucking copying myself and shit and spending all my fucking retail wage on that shit i would see people that look my look like me and I'd only see Asian people wearing that shit early on, early doors. But then whenever you see the shows, it'd be all of these fucking white people, white walking the shows. It'd be like, hold on. The only people that are wearing this stuff is people that look like me, Asian people, and fucking Kanye early, early on, right? And, and Rihanna maybe with the, with the bomber jacket, the exaggerated one with the fucking stitches hanging at the back of it. So I would kind of get annoyed. And of, of course, over time, I think, you know, them that kind of got shamed into being more diverse and having more people, you know, be representative of the brand and having different faces, different colors and creeds on it. But I almost thought forcing somebody to be diverse and be inclusive was also a bit lame if they don't want to do it from their if they didn't want to do it from their own heart and the fact that they've been shamed into doing it also wasn't really instructive didn't really do much to kind of you know change the narrative or to tell a different story but when the whole you know less forced diversity thing came in i kind of was a fan of it i didn't really mind it just for the sake of hey if they're going to force it in maybe this will lead to better change going forward the funny thing about it is that now that we are so many years gone by now so many years now have passed since the george floyd thing it feels like they've become more whitewashed so they've now reverted back to form which kind of makes you think the whole diversity thing was definitely a trend was definitely momentary 
and definitely something they didn't really believe in because if you go back to the other lvmh prize finalists you'll see as the years go back the the range of people is way more diverse look at this so this is 2024 finalists right very white based you go back to 2023 look at that <laughs> yeah <laughs> you got a couple of diverse faces there you go back to the 2022 list a bit more diverse here you go back to the 2021 <laughs> <laughs> a bit more diverse and then you go back to 2020 more diverse so as the years have progressed and we got further away from the george floyd tragedy these brands these prizes have decided let's go back to what we know let's go back to presenting this white face of fashion this one way of kind of doing fashion this one representation and let's forget all this diverse people all these people from all these different walks of life who kind of add to the tapestry to the global language that is fucking fashion let's just present it in one one fucking way it's kind of wild if you think about it like the contrast to go from this to that is pretty insane and kind of proves to you that their hearts were never really in it they were just doing it to kind of you know avoid being called out online they didn't really kind of believe that, that it was important to kind of rewrite or to kind of give fashion a different face and now that no one's looking lvmh pride has gone back to being whitewashed so you know um big up the finalists anyway regardless you got obuero duran latnik hodkova marie adam lienhart you got nicola pascatelli Pasqu Pas Pasqualetti, you got someone called Paolo Carazana, you got Pauline Dujancourt, Duj and you got Standing Ground. Big up them anyway for being in the final. Um, you know, it's not their fault they got put in the final list. It kind of is what it is, but it is kind of wild to see the contrast of how it once was to how it is now. It is kind of wild. It is kind of wild. But again, big up the fine list. And maybe another reflection of like, you know, maybe waiting for people to acknowledge you and stuff isn't probably the way to go. Connect with your fans. Kind of go from there. Kind of go from there.